Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking fire text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition and I'm just gonna run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, uh, 30 FPS and a duration of 10 to 15 seconds. So press OK. Once you have that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some text in here. So I'm going to write my text in there. I'm going to open up my character settings. The font that I'm using is Mission Gothic. And basically, I'm just setting my value here. So I'll leave it around something like that. And I've just made sure that it's all caps. Once you're happy with your text, make sure that you align it to your center of your composition. Once we have that, then what we need to do is we need to create a new shape layer. So I'm just going to go to right click and go new shape layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my fill to black and my stroke to none. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the ellipse tool and then I'm just going to double click it. And now I've got a nice black ellipse on my composition. So once I've got that, then what I can do is I can open up the ellipse path one, change this value back to zero. And then what I can do is I can just bring that value up and just so I have something like this. So the last two letters are just showing a little bit of text. Once I have that, then the next thing that I need to do is I just need to rename that layer. So I'm just gonna call that blur map. So cool, so now once we have our ellipse, now we can put some effects on here. The first effect that we're gonna put on here is fast box blur. And I'm just going to increase the size to, let's say maybe something like, we'll go about 60. And I'm just gonna take off repeat edge pixels. Then what we need to do is we need to add a solid composite and we'll leave that as white just like that. Now there are some other effects that we're gonna put in here, but we'll do that a little bit later. So we're just gonna move that to the bottom and then take the eye off because we don't need it for now. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to create another new adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna create that adjustment layer and I'm just gonna rename it while we're here. So this is gonna be called blur and a displacement map. And we'll do that a little bit later but the first effect that we're going to throw in here is we are going to look for a camera lens blur so i'm just going to change the blur radius to about 80. i'm just going to change the shape to octagon i'm just going to increase the roundness like that to about 100 then i'm going to set my blur map to my blur map and then i'm going to change the source to effects and masks and now you can see that it just affects those side bits as well so we deselect this and now you can see you've got a bit of that edge coming out which is exactly what we want now if you want to go back and change anything for example if you want to change you know the amount of blur that you have um you can do that by going back and changing that fast box blur uh in that blur map but I'm pretty happy with that. And now the next thing that we're gonna do is add some color to that. So I'm gonna add another adjustment layer and I'm just going to call this uh, color. Cool. So now that we have our new adjustment layer, the first effect in here we need to put in is a solid composite. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change that to black. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the effect called color rama. And now if you go down to output cycle and then change the preset to fire, now you've got that cool fire effect on there. And if you don't put solid composite on there, then that whole colorama effect won't work. So the last effect that we're gonna throw in here is going to be a noise alpha effect. And we're just gonna put this right at the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the amount to let's say about 75. I'm gonna change the original alpha to edges and I'm going to change the noise to let's say squared random. Cool. So now you can see what is actually happening with this effect. And if you wanna go back to your blur map, you can go back in here and you can change some of these things here. So I didn't want the fire to really affect this part of the text. So I just went and changed the size or you can just go and change the scale if you want. So totally up to you, whichever way that you do it. 
So cool, so now we have some nice fire with some nice grain. Now we need to make it move. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add a new solid and I'm going to call this solid Fractal. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the effect called Fractal Noise. And I'm just gonna change a few of the settings here. So I'm gonna change the Fractal type to Dynamic. I'm going to bump up the contrast to let's say something about 250. I'm gonna to go to the transform settings as well. And I'm just gonna change the scale and bring that up to about, let's say 200. Maybe even drop that down a bit. Maybe we'll go like, let's say 180. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold option and hit that stopwatch for evolution and change it to time times 100. And so now we've got this fractal noise going off in the background and it really looks like flame so well not right now but it will so that looks pretty cool so the next effect that we need to put in here is another fast box blur and this time we're just going to change the blur radius to 50 and we can deselect the repeat edge pixels once we have that, then also we can add another effect in here called calculations. So now that we've got the effect called calculations, we're gonna go down to the second layer and we're gonna change that back to our blur map. And we're gonna change the source to effects and masks. And then we are also going to increase that to 100%. And the final effect that we are going to put down here is a tint effect. So all we're gonna do here is just click on that black and then bring it probably about halfway, something like that. And now we've changed that black to a gray. Cool, so now what we can do is we can take that eye off because we don't really need it. And still again, nothing is moving right now, but if we go back to our displacement blur and displacement adjustment layer, and if we add a displacement map in here, and then if we change the displacement map to fractal, and then we change the source to effects and masks, and then we change the horizontal displacement to luminance, and bump up that value to let's say 100. And then we do the same thing again for the vertical displace. And we bump that up to about 100. Now you've got this cool kind of effect that still does not move. And now it looks a bit out of shape. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate that effect and we need to just put negative values on these two settings over here. So now we have that kind of fire effect coming out of the text. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make it move a little bit more. So we're gonna go back down to our blur map and we're gonna add some turbulent displace in here. And so I'm gonna keep the amount at 50, but I'm going to increase the size to about 250. And you can see what that does there. You can see how it's got that kind of fire effect, which is looking cool. But what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna hold option and I'm going to click that stopwatch for evolution. I'm gonna write time times 100. And now if you've done that correctly, now you will have those flames coming in and coming out. And you know, you can play around with some of the settings. Like for example, you can see here, it probably goes a little bit too much. So what you can do, you can always go back to your blur map. And then if you go to the scale, you can find, you know, the nice sweep point that kind of maybe doesn't affect that part of the lettering. So you'll have to kind of scrub through that and see how you go with that. But I think that looks pretty cool. So now we can close up all of that stuff and we can highlight all of those layers. And then if we go to layer pre-compose, I'm just gonna call that text. Now we can add our background. So if I just go and if I add a new solid, if I call it BG, drag it underneath. And then if I search up the effect called gradient ramp, and you can't see anything there because you need to go onto your text pre-comp and change the blend mode to screen. So cool, so going back to our gradient ramp, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go color hunt and I'm just gonna choose this dark orange um, color over here. I'm gonna change that white color and I'm going to 
put that value in there like that. I'm gonna change it to a radial ramp. I'm gonna move that start of the ramp probably to about there and the end of the ramp to maybe something like that depending on what you want. And if you go swap colors, now you've got a nice uh, gradient ramp. <clears throat> So now the next thing that we're gonna add in here is a, an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna keep it just above the, uh, so I'm gonna keep it just above the background and I'm just gonna add some curves in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just really gonna kind of darken that area over there and then just bring this up a bit. So it's a bit of a bigger S bend and it just means it creates a, a pretty nice vignette around everything. And the other thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create another new adjustment layer and I'm gonna add some noise here. So if I bump that up to probably about 10%, now I've got some cool noise that is on top of everything. And I think it just, you know, ties everything else together. So now the last thing that I'm gonna do or that I did in my original clip is I just added a scale in animation. So I just pressed S on scale, started at 100% uh, and then maybe went to about 110. And the other thing that you can add here is you can add a burn film effect here. So you can see what that looks like. So if I start that at let's say 100% and then I don't know, move to one second and then bring it back down. Now you've got this kind of burn in effect, which brings that text in. And I think that looks pretty cool as well, but you don't really need that. So anyway, so that's how we do the fire text in Adobe After Effects. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.